the April 13, 1993 school board meeting is called to order. Uh, the first item on our agenda is adjustments to the agenda. Uh, under item new business, it'll come under FA, will be the ratification of the custodial bus, bus driver's contract. Are there any other adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none, we move on to approval of the school board minutes for the meeting of March 9th, 1993. Are there any adjustments to the minutes? Seeing none, they stand. We now move on to comments by our high school um, representatives, uh, Mindy and Courtney. Good evening. Good evening. If you all have been in the high school recently, you may have noticed some changes to our student body. Last week we had um, additions from um, Germany and France um, on exchange programs. And there, were, there was a guest choir from Aachen, Germany. And they performed a concert with our high school band last week. And um, for the past, this week and the week before, um, there's been a number of exchange students from Paris, France. And as you recall, um, earlier this year, we had um, a number of our students go over to France, and so they have returned the visit. And it's been very exciting talking with them and going to social events with them. So they've been a great addition. Um, also, this week, we're missing the freshmen. That we're very sad to say. But we know that they're having a great time at the freshman retreat. And they've done something a little different this year. In the past, um, it's usually been at the beginning of the year for the incoming freshmen and they get to know themselves a little bit better and they have speakers on um, substance abuse. But this year it was decided to have it near the end of the year and um, sources tell me that it's, it's a lot different than in the past. It's, the goal this year has been working on creating a safe environment for students to talk about any issues that they have to ask questions. There are no speakers so there's no lecturing and it's just a time for students to build trust in themselves and between themselves and get to know their classmates a little bit better and also um, think about what they're going to do in the years ahead for the remainder of their high school career. Okay, and about a week and a half ago, Cape Elizabeth hosted the um, speech, speech and debate districts. And from that, we have two students, Lori O'Donnell and Ben Berman, who will be attending the national competition from June 14th through the 18th in Indiana. Um, well, this was spearheaded by Mr. Mullen and they've done a really good job. The speech, whole speech team has done a really good job all season and the fact that we're taking, that two students were picked is a great honor. Also, we're about a month and a half away from May Senior Service Projects. 17 students have, have signed up to participate. They're going to be from May 24th until June 4th and we have until April 26th to pick out um, what services we, people would like to do and there have there has been great interest in several of them and um, it's I, I think it's going to be a very very good program thanks can I ask a question what what has happened with the drama one act play they went on to the states too. oh yeah um, they went on to the states and they they what, did you place? no we didn't place at all so which was kind of expected um, Usually at states, um, we don't get as much recognition as we'd hoped, but the plays were outstanding there and maybe next year. <laughs> but, uh, but it's a credit to get to the states. Yes, so. yeah. yes, it's a great honor to be with all those plays. Uh, do you have any idea where sports are, the spring sports? They're just starting. <laughs> yeah, Lacrosse they're has been starting. <laughs> <laughs> Snow shoveling. So Lacrosse has tried to play three They're games. all trying to share no the high avail. school, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many lots and like that. Many games have been postponed. They were supposed to have started by now, but it's still technically preseason because of the snow. Thank you. I, I thought the audience might like to know about Miss Merrill. Do you all know about Miss oh, Merrill? I had that on my Go ahead, you check. <coughs> oh, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me pass it. <laughs> <laughs> let me share. Will you can listen? Nice. She's been selected. To, uh, Sharon Merrill has been selected as this year's recipient of the Maine Distinguished Counselor Award by the Maine Association for Counseling and Development. She received this award for her outstanding contributions to the field of counseling. 
So this is a switch we're giving you. <laughs> a piece of news. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, for your information too, there is a uh, coffee Thursday morning, April 15th from 7.15 to 9.45 in the guidance office in your honor. And I don't know if that's something that you drink coffee or not, but. <laughs> I have to comment on the, um, the spring band uh, music concert and the, the performance by the German choir was, it was unbelievable mm -hmm. that it was coming from high school voices. It yeah, was unbelievable, talent. amazing talent. Our band performed very well, and and <laughs> yes. and, and our our uh, chorus made a very noble attempt. It's amazing because they only had two days to work together like mm -hmm. that just to put it all together. It was incredible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our middle school. <coughs> Hi. Down at the middle school, our numbers are also somewhat depleted because half the sixth graders this week have been at Chewankee, um, and they're having fun from what we've heard, despite the rain. The other sixth graders will be going after April vacation. All the spring sports practices have started up, but there haven't been any games yet, partly because of the weather. Um, grades closed last Friday, and report cards will be going home at the end of the week. The April dance, which was sponsored by the sophomores, went well, and we are beginning plans for the last dance and the last social, which will be some, sometime in June. Eighth graders are looking forward to seeing Shakespeare's Macbeth at the North, North Shore Theater the week after vacation. And I'm sorry to say that Christy won't be joining us as middle school representative anymore because she's moving to Arizona sometime in the next few weeks. I just want to recognize that Jennifer is also a celebrity in her own right. I believe she's involved in the Portland, in the Lyric Theater's production of uh, Sound of Music. So, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to communications, and I defer to the superintendent. Okay. I have quite a pile, so I will try to go through them. Rather quickly, I've given uh, copies of, I think, all but one item in your packet. I'll start out with that one item. <clears throat> I received a note from Allison Montgomery, our very able uh, nurse, nursing department secretary, I think is the way to describe her, her uh, official duties. She is planning on leaving us at the end of the year, um, and she's been here since August 1982. Uh, I also know from um, both talking with her and with the other nurses, how valued she is. Keeping those kinds of records in a school department can often, they can, we can lose track of them. It's very difficult when people go off to school uh, or change districts. She's done a, a wonderful job. In fact, she's done such a good job that she tells me the state doesn't even check her records on a yearly basis anymore, just about once every other year, because they know that she sets the benchmark. So thank you, Allison. And can I just say one thing about that? Uh, another place she'll be sorely missed, I think, is that kindergarten screening. She's been kind of the greeter, hostess, who makes the kids feel so welcome at the door. And I know I, I've been doing that for about five years, and she's always so nice to the kids and their nervous parents. So <laughs> sorry she'll be leaving. Well, she, maybe you could talk her into doing <laughs> yeah, that would retirement. Be good. That would be good. I'd be a greeter. Uh, we have a notice here from Belinda Snell in our high school uh, guidance department. Um, senior Joanna Johnson has, is a recipient of the Six Alive America's Future Awards. I think we heard earlier this year about Joanna, and we're very proud of her contributions um, in uh, various kinds of community service events. I assume that that will be on TV. I haven't seen it myself yet, but that congratulations. Uh, we have a letter here from uh, Frank Miles to Laurie O'Donnell, who was uh, nominated as an Outstanding Senior Leadership Award from the Maine Principals Association. Uh, we've already heard her mention it here once tonight, but we all know that she has been involved with many student activities this year as president of the SAC, uh, a very active leadership model, I think, uh, for our school. Um, I included in your packet a couple of, uh, it, it seems to me it's a little early in the year to be getting end of the year letters, but they feel like kind of end of the year letters uh, from a couple of parents from students in Pine Cove and Middle School. 
thanking individual teachers and programs for the um, genuine progress they feel their students have made, and I included that so you'll know that we do, in fact, get good news um, from time to time. Do these letters get circulated to any extent, uh, or are teachers made aware of these favorable mentions? And these go to the building principals. I think they generally speak, obviously, to the teachers, but also to team leadership, I believe, um, as appropriate. Um, one of the, always one of the issues you have with letters, um, as far as, you know, just absolute general across the board, is that for every person who gets mentioned, there are many others who are doing um, admirable things and we don't really want to uh, create any kind of waves of one kind or another but we do in fact uh, appreciate comments and we try to use feedback both good and bad as a means of figuring out how we're doing also included in your packet a memo from Pat Monterio and Pam Rawson from the high school they sent to me on a science and math integrated project particularly wanted you to see that because it is a continuation of some of the topics we took to, <coughs> talked about during our coalition <coughs> meetings um, for the first half of the year. Uh, you heard both of those teachers talking about assessment projects of one kind or another, and I think this is an excellent example of their uh, continuing to work on not only drawing up the assessments, but that piece called reflection. What went well, what didn't go well. An excellent example, I think, of uh, curriculum building on an ongoing basis. We had a letter from Greg Tinsman, who is the Cape Elizabeth uh, uh, Chair of Emergency Preparedness. Uh, as he, his letter points out, we were all grateful the blizzard of 93 didn't turn out to be whatever they were billing it to be. Uh, but we did open up the um, high school cafeteria, and Greg was in charge of that. And this is a letter thanking various people who helped, including some of our cafeteria people and Dan Reed, our maintenance supervisor, um, people who came in and spent long hours during that period of time. I have a letter here from uh, parents who were raising some concerns about fourth grade gifted and talented programs, their point of view being that uh, it's premature to be doing intensive testing for that kind of challenge. Furthermore, pointing out that they feel that there have been some improvements in the curriculum raising of standards that makes they pull out fourth grade program um, less necessary or desirable. As a matter of fact, uh, obviously the board, you are aware that during our um, budget session, we pointed out that we uh, had not stressed that program this year and we're going to turn it into a con consultative kind of uh, situation rather than a pull out program for next year, concentrating our, our actual programs at the five through eight. It's a letter here addressed to Mr. Charlie Greer is the chairman, but I felt that it was intended to be shared with the entire board, which I have done so from Deb Cross, our grade five teacher, commenting on computers in the classroom. I thought you would be interested in the point that uh, there really is a lot of interest and some real growth has gone on. Um, teachers still feeling hampered by not enough computers, um, an issue, of course, that we wrestled with in the um, uh, during budget session. But uh, I thought it was a very positive comment on teachers' interest and willingness to pursue that. Uh, also, you have a letter here from Reg McDonald, Superintendent of Schools in South Portland, which he has used to take the opportunity to include a memo from a Thompson, uh Thompson, former school board member, uh, currently serves as a member of the School Funding Task Force, expressing, um, I think, a very strong case for Southern Maine getting more of a share through the subsidy formula, an issue that we've already discussed through the budget process, but I, I thought you'd be interested in that summary. And those are my communications. Any other communications from the board? Um, I would just like to make comment on um, a date to remember, which is the Joint School Board Building Committee Workshop, which was originally scheduled in your calendar for April 29th. That has been moved to May 6th at the same time at 7 p.m. in the council chambers. Um, there seems to be a conflict that night. I believe it's candidates' night, so um, that's why the date has been changed. Okay, we now move on to the superintendent's report, and the first is the report card. 
I included in your packet a copy, and for anybody in the audience, uh, we have a few extra copies and, and we'll make more. This was an attempt on the part of the State Department a few years ago to um, use data submitted to the state through our usual end of the year reports and to try to present each community with a kind of summary that was supposed to give various educational indicators. For instance, there's information in here on the MEAs, as well as some financial indicators, some charts showing uh, enrollment, uh, what subsidy we received, and so on. Um, I think that perhaps this is, this is one of those pieces of data that, uh, although useful, uh, I don't know exactly where it stands in the state budget formula, but it may have outlived its time. However, um, for purposes of review, we sometimes do use this when people from out of state ask us uh, for particular kinds of information which may be included here, but usually the questions they ask us are not any, I don't know if you have any comments or. Uh, I also included in your packet a memo and a chart, and Frank is also here tonight, um, as well as Rick DeFusco. As you know, for the past year, and actually for longer than that, the high school has been looking at a way to deal with some of the dilemmas the current schedule poses for them. Uh, we talked about some fairly extensive changes, and in the spirit, I believe, of reasonable compromise, uh, they are prepared to go forward next year with a 55-minute period day. Uh, and because 55 minutes, you cannot put all the offerings we have in a six-period day, it would require building the schedule so that uh, actually uh, it would take two days to complete the cycle. Uh, I'm not sure how clear this chart is. It gives you some idea, but the memo certainly goes into more detail, and I think you have the general idea. Uh, going from approximately 43 minutes to a 55-minute period is not a radical departure. It is a reasonable step. It will cause the high school to um, have to rethink some of its processes. There may be some individual student schedules that have back-to-back uh, -back study halls or back-to-back -back or a full, completely full day uh, with no breaks. Um, we believe that those will be uh, in the minority and we certainly believe that this is a step in the right direction and I would recommend to you um, a favorable reading of this. I did not put it on the agenda as a vote item, but that does not mean that if you wish to um, uh, change it into a vote item that you can do so. And I don't know if you want to ask any questions of Frank in specifics. Or Anybody on the board? Mark? I, I have no question, rather just a comment that I think 55 minutes is a, a very appropriate step in terms of trying to accomplish a number of the things that were described in studying the longer 80-minute periods. And I'm completely in favor of it. Anyone else like to comment? Rosemary? Ditto. That's exactly what I was going to say. And I do commend the staff for continuing to persist uh, with finding a schedule that uh, worked uh, differently than the one you have. And I uh, like this one very much. I would be willing to make a motion if uh, anyone else on the board thought it was a vote item. I personally think it is. Peter, you had a comment? I was just going to add a ditto, a rhetorical ditto. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it a second if, uh, if she makes a motion. I think it would send a very positive message if the board really supports this to make it a action item. I think that would tell the staff that we do support looking at change and what's better effective um, education and delivery of education. And um, if that's the will of the board, then I would entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the high school um, principal's proposal for a 55-minute schedule change at the high school to begin in September of 1993. Second. Any discussion? Was there anybody? Anybody from the public that would like to comment on this at this time? Would the principal like to comment on this? Well, I, I 
would uh, just like to say this the staff is just overwhelmingly in favor of this particular change uh, we've talked uh, several times with the student advisory council and the students think it's a change that's positive they have some concerns but um, they see the advantages outweighing the disadvantages uh, I think that there will be a break uh, and, and there's a, a decent lunch break for students in the middle of the day um, regardless of how many classes in a row they might have a uh, in a particular day and just a correction it, it, it's it will take four days to cycle through the, the schedule it's uh, six periods each day and if instead of uh, to, to get our eight period day uh, in an even number of times it will take four days to do that and uh, we think it will work very well it will really be a very positive change um, we're looking forward to it mm -hmm. I just wanted to commend you for sticking with this process, you know, starting with one idea. Um, you got a little bit of flack about it from various quarters, but you kept, you know, going out and looking at, at what was out there and really including e every group that's uh, interested in this issue in those discussions. And I really applaud you on this. I think it's a really good step. Thank you. I, I think the staff is pleased. I think they also want to make sure that people know that they are going to continue to think about the schedule. It's a perplexing problem that's always with us as to how to best um, serve the needs of, of many different kinds of instructional situations. And every schedule is a compromise. But I think we see this as a step in the right direction. And we'll see how it works and keep in touch. Thank you. Any other comments? Loretta? I was just going to ask, will science labs still connect to science classes? Yes, very much so. The, the schedule actually doesn't get built any differently under this process than it, it has normally. Once the students are scheduled in, our, in an eight period configuration, we simply spread that out over, over the, the four day period and it, it works very easily. I mean, we don't do anything differently in our computer than we've done in the past. It's, much simpler than the 80-minute schedules, which aren't really that complicated either, but it's a, just a different twist. But this is very easy to do, and it's very nice. So there'll be those same connections. And labs will meet once every eight days, rather than having to meet every four days, which would be an awful lot of lab time. Um, they'll meet once every eight days. And um, actually, it works out to almost the same amount of time over the course of a quarter as you have now. Those back-to-back -back possible um, study halls on a four-day schedule, they wouldn't be necessarily have that kind of thing every day, would they? Oh, no. No, but students, a, a few students now have back-to-back -back study halls. That is it's just the way the periods. And one of the things we will try to do is encourage students to take electives or find positive ways to, um, to use that time. And um, I will be back in May with a proposal on some computer uh, options for ninth grade that I think will strike near and dear to your heart. Um, that um, may help alleviate any possible qualms that somebody would have too much study hall time that they couldn't use profitably. There may be some uh, interesting options for them to use there. Any further comment? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Uh, we now move on to the superintendent's report on the high school principal search committee. And just an update from last month where we t discussed the general um, outline of that committee and the process. We're moving along. Members of the high school principal search committee are uh, faculty representation, Gail Adshead, Sam Boothby, uh, and uh, Betsy Wiley. Uh, the administrator representing um, the group is Rick DeFusco, who is, of course, the uh, assistant principal at the high school. We have board member representation, Mark Foray and Peter Leslie, who is the chair of the group. Um, and we have a parent represent representative, excuse me, Ann Kerner, and Jan Higgins is our student representative. The group has had one formal meeting so far where we met to discuss criteria. And I also want to wish, uh, thank um, Belinda Snell and uh, Jackie Petrillo, who devised and passed out a faculty um, and staff input sheet and then collated it and uh, gave it back to the committee. We've had a chance to look at it. Uh, they used, I think, a very careful process where they sat down uh, as a group to talk over certain 
um, criteria as well as making sure that everybody in the building had a chance to sit and discuss that criteria and uh, or in fact to fill out a form and write individual suggestions um, and uh, the process we will be using will our target for interviewing in the first two weeks in May and hopefully we will finish before the end of the school year. Any comment? Uh, we now move on to school board subcommittees and reports. The first is the finance subcommittee and our chairman, uh, Rosemary Reed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the finance committee meeting of April 13th, held at 6.30 tonight, uh, we received and reviewed the uh, month ending March 31st, 93 financial statements, and there are uh, no remarkable uh, expenses, uh, however, uh, there was a late payment from the state which will show up next uh, month and will correct the system on the revenue side. We reviewed and signed the school warrants. We uh, had a detailed report on the uh, school bus situation, the number of buses, the number of miles, the expenses, and I can report to the uh, public that we have ordered uh, a new bus for next year. And we reviewed uh, in some detail the school lunch activity and we're looking at various uh, reasons that are causing fluctuations in the revenues and expenses in the cafeteria. Now that budget is over, we're doing things that are a little less substantial than we were in the other months, but we still had a lively meeting. We discussed, uh, if I didn't say photocopy machines as well for system-wide. That, that's the end of my report. Any comment, questions? Thank you very much. We now move on to policy subcommittee and our chairman, Loretta Pond. Uh, the policy subcommittee met last Wednesday and discussed the placement policy for the final time, and it is, being, it is in your packet uh, as a first <coughs> reading. Actually, it's the second time we've discussed it, but it will be the first reading of that policy this evening. And uh, with, with input from the administrators, we made a few final changes, which may continue to change this evening, but, but we do have uh, our best effort at a, a comprehensive placement policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we now move on to the Middle School Building Committee, and the superintendent is going to comment. Just very briefly, we continue to work on uh, translating the program that is what actually is taught in the, the space needs that that would generate into um, some kind of shape and we're beginning now to see some sketches from the architectural group we're working with it's getting to that exciting moment uh, almost scary moment when you begin to see the possibilities um, the I think we feel strongly that the time is coming quickly to involve not only the rest of this board but also uh, to begin to reach out to the public with the options. We haven't quite gotten to the point where we have distinct options to show people yet, but we've had a lot of good discussion. Uh, I also would report that the chair of the building committee and one of the uh, members of the architectural firm had a workshop with the planning board, which is a necessary kind of preliminary background checking so that uh, everybody kind of knows what's going on. A major issue that is uh, surfacing, I've mentioned it before, is a review of the traffic um, and, in fact, looking at the entire site. Uh, we have uh, strongly felt that the traffic pattern around both of those schools, the idea that there is parking and traffic between them, is both cumbersome and unsafe. So that the plans that you'll be seeing at the workshop that we mentioned May 6th uh, or at least the preliminary sketches, all will try to um, eliminate that in some interesting ways, now that I piqued your curiosity. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? Um, there have been two meetings since our last meeting, one on March 31st and one on April 8th. It was at those two meetings that um, some of the preliminary sketches were brought. There were three brought on March 31st, and two more brought on April 8th. Uh, the two that were brought April 8th were refinements of things that were seen in the first three, and there was still some discussion even on those refinements. Uh, so hopefully by the 29th, which will be another working meeting, that we will have some kind of a solidified 
we're actually getting down to two options. And I think it'll be interesting to get your perspective of those two options. I think that's what we're working for. I think that's, we're at a point of getting some direction of, of where the board and the community might want to go. Uh, we now move on to the town center committee and Rosemary Reed is our representative. Uh, the town center planning committee uh, will be having a public hearing tomorrow um, on the uh, recommendations before we give the final uh, plan to the town council at uh, the May town council meeting. I would uh, suggest that anyone who's had the opportunity to read the recommendations that were outlined very well in the Cape Courier in the last issue. Uh, if you have any uh, issues, questions, or concerns that you attend the meeting tomorrow night, uh, I have passed along my packet of material for that to a member of the uh, building committee for review and will be carrying back to the committee any uh, information that would be pertinent to the schools because the idea is that uh, the recommendations, if accepted by the town council, will be the basis for language for ordinance changes uh, in the town center. And of course, the schools are 90 acres of uh, area right in the middle of the town center. So we uh, do have a large area to deal with. And uh, I suggest anyone be there tomorrow and review the Cape Courier, which outlined the recommendations very well. Any questions, comments? We thank Rosemary for representing us on that board. Uh, we now move on to unfinished business, and it is a policy reading on uh, suggest suggested revisions for policy IHM, student placement within the schools. There's some question of whether this is a second reading or a first reading. Since it is a revision, complete revision, I think we should treat it as a first reading. Um, I'll defer to the superintendent, I guess. Okay. Um, well, it is a policy that does exist in the book, and uh, we did uh, pull it out and start looking at it two meetings ago, so I agree with you that it's a little confusing as to which it should be. Uh, in the current form, that is the revised form, we took one policy that was a mixture of board level policy and some administrative procedures, and I'm recommending that we separate those out so that what you have on your green sheet is what, whatever you finally do with it or amend it or what have you uh, becomes a board level policy followed in your policy book with three or administrative procedures from the three separate uh, administrative uh, configuration that is high school, middle school, and Pond Cove, which would of course be K-4. Uh, it's been a, a rather long process and frankly I personally have found it interesting because we've had input from the board administration, um, we've had some, I know that the uh, buildings have had some discussion about it, we've had some parent direct input as well as uh, conversations I'm sure out in the community, we've asked questions uh, uh, to some degree through parent conferencing. And there is clearly, uh, this is one of those iceberg issues that uh, no matter when you bring up the issue or where the element, particularly at elementary school, you get a lot of discussion about placement. The other thing is that the high school, uh, particularly in a situation such as we have with both advanced placement, honors courses, college prep courses, there seems to be a good deal of discussion about how do we handle those. It might be helpful if anybody is following this, uh, would you like me to simply read this for the benefit of the public? Please. It is the goal of the Cape Elizabeth School Department to place each student appropriately in a program of study which will best serve his, her, his or her social, emotional, and academic development. In order to accomplish this goal, the school administrators, guidance personnel, teachers, and parents are to be involved in providing information to the principal. School personnel will take an active role in promoting good communication with parents through a variety of means, including open house activities, teacher conferences, and written correspondence, such as report cards, progress reports, and teacher summaries of student work. This process of communication will also include opportunities for parents to give input as to what kind of classroom environment they see as helpful for their child. Each administrative unit 
will develop specific procedures that include a variety of means by which school personnel make recommendations for specific classroom placements to the principal. The principal will make the placement based on these recommendations. Each unit will also provide for a review process by which a parent may request a reassessment of the placement. After the review process, the principal will make the final recommendation. The board will review the administrative procedures on an annual basis. Um, I don't know if you want any editorial comment from me or at this point, I think perhaps I'll just let it. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on this issue? Seeing none, anyone from the board have any comments? Mark? I would like to uh, thank the policy committee for putting this together. I think it is a very helpful policy as written and the concept of having dual policy followed by administrative guidelines I think is appropriate especially on this subject. I'd, I'd, my only perhaps thought of caution is in regards to changes in the administrative guidelines that might vary what uh, would be considered from the intent of this particular policy. Um, in reading through the guidelines that are included in the packet, I think they're very sound and, and address the policy very appropriately. In the previous policy, which many uh, parents and some board members had some concerns with, there was a clause that I found very difficult to accept in, in the school setting. And as we have brought about CPQI and, and trying to bring about uh, change in enhancing the school system by trying to meet customers or parents and students needs um, that policy had a problem in that it asked the customer not only uh, it, it, it not only stated that there are some times that we may be able to not fulfill things you're interested in but don't even ask um, and uh, an analogy I think would be to go into a hardware store and say ask for eight penny nails and the hardware person say well not only do we not have any but don't even ask um, so I, I think that to put restrictions on parents as to what you can or cannot say is perhaps going further than a policy ought to I think inviting appropriate input is, an, is a good way of trying to direct communication and I think this policy in the attached uh, guidelines for each administrative unit have gone a long way towards bringing about better communication and solving the problem. Anyone else? Yeah. Jan. Um, I want to commend the staff at Pond Co, for example, for um, working hard to try and make the curricula um, the same across all grade levels. I, I think in this policy, it's, it's a policy that will be just right, though, down the road. I think that they are not there yet as far as making the curricula even across all the, all the classrooms in the grade levels. And so until that truly happens, I would hope that there is a lot of leniency and compassion in, in listening to what parents have to say about placement for their children because I still think that that's an issue. The other thing is just in keeping with our mission statement, um, is it possible, and this is a small thing, in, in the second line, instead of saying his or her social, emotional, and academic development, if we could say his or her academic, social, and emotional development. Mm -hmm. Any objections? None? Y'all done? I agree with with what Jan just said um, I would also uh, like if we could to add something in the second paragraph about uh, written materials um, everything we refer to here is is uh, either pertains only to the individual child or uh, to you know activity open houses and, and that kind of activity and I would I would like to include we had some discussion at, at these meetings about um, that it would be a good idea to give uh, syllabi to courses and expectations and I, I would like to send that message um, that that is a you know a communication tool with parents if we could include some language I don't have the language written out but um, something along those lines um, also I, I do think this is a, 
a great improvement over the old policy, but um, I think it really does need to be backed up with very specific administrative policies, and I think we have that um, from the high school and the middle school right now. I, I really don't think we have that from Pond Cove, and I don't know if what we have is still a draft, but I would really like to see specific, the, uh, the appeals process or the reassessment process spelled out as far as what it is, because uh, right now I, I don't know um, what, the, what the process is, and I'm not sure a parent would necessarily understand what the process was. Would one of the administrators like to address them? <clears throat> I would agree with you, and I think that there is a need to spell that out more clearly. I think one of the, the primary parts of, of that appeal process needs to be uh, put in writing by the parents. I think in the past we've experienced phone calls, we've experienced secondhand kinds of phone calls, um, written notes in the middle of the summertime. So I think that, that what we need to do is to clarify uh, the expectation of parents that they put their request in writing so that we have that. I think it's important to have that paper trail. Uh, and likewise, I think uh, it would be helpful to establish a date by which we accomplish that so that we're not... Um okay, I, I agree with you. Parents should have some way of doing this in, in a formal manner, but, but I would go farther than that and say that the school then has to, you know, take very specific steps that the parent can understand um, so that they are assured that their case has been heard in the same way anybody else's case might have been mm -hmm. heard. I mean, just ex explicit steps of, of how that will be handled. I would also say, too, that if we're going to spell, spell out policies and procedures that, um, you know, it says here, objective multi-step procedure precedes each child's placement. I, I think we should say what that is, um, say what the procedure is, because even as a board member, I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure what that means, except for looking at these groupings. I don't understand, you know, I, I don't, as, as a parent, understand um, you know, what happens, how right. the teachers go about making that procedure and when, when the placements get to you and how, how that works. So I think that would be helpful. There is a letter that went out <coughs> last June with the report cards that ex began to explain that process, and I think we can go back to that letter. I think that the, the pieces are there and refine it even more for, for this year. I think the high school did a particularly good job of spelling out the mm -hmm. procedure, and um, it, it was it just very well done. We'll have a look at that one. Thing. Okay, thank you, Rosemary. Yeah, um, <coughs> I just I wanted to comment uh, for a moment on the Pond Cove, uh, and then Beth, there are two things that concern me when I listen to um, parents' concerns about placement. And one is I have to separate educational soundness from, or, or what I feel to be educationally uh, sound comment from hearsay. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that it's very important that parents be willing to um, submit uh, specific uh, information pertaining to their child. Right. And yeah. I don't know how to exactly say that, but just to let parents know that if they do that, that it's confidential mm -hmm. and that it's, uh, used uh, appropriately and then the other thing is I'm concerned about a date uh, I'm concerned for two reasons one that uh, if a placement is made before a parent knows how the uh, student will react within the group and within that teaching style I would hate to say have the date say that if you do not do this by September 1st there will be 180 days in this situation I w would like to see that, that there be a hatch where they could, you know, assess this on an appropriate um, After time frame. school has begun in September. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. the issues may not develop uh, when the names of the teacher comes home in June. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that would go more to hearsay than educational soundness. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to make sure that there is an escape um, clause in there you know, at either the appropriate time, a quarter or vacation or an appropriate time mm -hmm. for that change. That's, it's, it, that's been a practice. I mean, we, we do that, but it hasn't been, I don't believe it's stated in the Well, in I the didn't see it, so I just thought I'd, say, you know. given the opportunity, I thought I'd add it. Mm -hmm. Ann? That, that reminded me of something, something else, and that is on that hearsay issue that I think, uh, we discussed this in some of the meetings too, that we have as much problem with hearsay 
among teachers because they haven't been in the in the next year's teachers' classrooms. And I would strongly um, urge um, you at the at the building level to do whatever you can to facilitate teachers, say in second grade. Um, being able to spend some time in third grade classrooms so that they too can make a you know a, a reasoned um, judgment about where where their kids should go right I think that would be very helpful we've talked about that a great deal and both Nancy and I have, have urged staff members to do that and have suggested that they take a half a day and, and uh, look at two or three different classrooms and then do that again before the placement process begins Loretta? I was just wondering, and maybe Connie can help me with this, when these policies and procedures are spelled out, how does it get to the teachers? Do you post these somewhere? Do you have a meeting with them? Or I think it's very important that the teachers know what's here mm -hmm. and what they can rely on mm -hmm. as support for what they need to do. And I'm not sure that these always reach them, or maybe they always do, but I know that that they aren't always followed like they're, mm -hmm. they're written. I, Maybe out of the process that, that we followed this year was really actually began last last fall in getting feedback uh, in small groups when we had some staff development time. Uh, that then was accumulated, that material, that information, feedback was accumulated, given back to the whole staff so that they could see and hear what one another had said. Uh, and we've had several informal um, discussions at team meetings, with input from teams, uh, asking team, team leaders to go back to their teams and, and uh, get thoughts and so forth about uh, placement. Um, the, the policy that has been drafted here has been given to teachers. Uh, after we talked last Thursday, I put this together and, and, uh, and gave it back to them. It, it's been an, an evolution. Uh, is that worked out that way at the high school, Mr. Miles? Is, have they had input into this, or they realize that there really are some changes with a lot of support for their decisions? Yes. Good. The, the, the procedure from the high school has been largely developed by, by teachers, so the department chairs. Good. We've gone over it several times, uh, both in the graduate stage and recently as our last year instruction. There was also some parent input, too, as far as going back to looking at the parent advisory, because I see a lot of this as some of the issues that were raised out of that year of study. We started with that as a basis, but the work the last year of the department chairs and the parents to look at the whole process on our students and how So I think that's a good reflection on utilizing the communication with parents and the staff to come up with a, a manageable um, procedure. Just to, to pick up on that, child, we've begun that this year, um, put together a very simple form in order to get feedback from parents about the kind of classroom environment that their child would, uh, would flourish in. And it was fairly successful. I think we need to continue to do it, and again, to spell out clearly that uh, that this is a process, it's a procedure that's available to parents. It does not have to be utilized, but it, it certainly is there and will help in, in the placement process. I think the, that folks are not familiar with it uh, yet, and we need to, to, to continue to talk about it and to do some parent education, and that will be helpful also. I think what's very positive about the revision of this policy is the last line. The board will review these administrative procedures on an annual basis, and I think that will keep us from getting into the mess that we got ourselves into by word of mouth that we had a policy that children could attempt and do anything they wanted. And we found that that wasn't even in place, and we weren't even adhering to the policy we had. So I think that's a very positive uh, step forward. So you have some revisions to work on? Oh, well, not, not bad, actually. <laughs> no, I'm not really. Feeling, yeah. Can, can, can I yes. That's a question. Um, by, the, by the time we vote on this, will we have administrative guidelines spelled out from all the schools? I mean, that, well, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think these are really done at Pond Cove. OK, if, what I'm hearing you say is that you'd like those more explicit for the second reading. I think we're all in agreement this is really a first reading. <laughs> 
Uh, I didn't hear any comments about the middle school, and I didn't hear no. any substantive comments about the high school as far as any changes go. So, uh, and I did, and we had two minor wording changes as far as the actual board policy goes. So, what we will do is, uh, in your May packet, uh, and if you're interested, I would suggest perhaps sending the the specific revisions at Pine Cove out in advance so that you have a chance to see those two. I don't see a need to re to um, refer this back to the s subcommittee unless they feel they need to act on we it again. <laughs> they've worked. <laughs> we might not <laughs> take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Since they've worked on this for three months now, I think they're they're glad to. And I'm, we're talking about long meetings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, att I attended your last one, and, and uh, that was interesting. So it's sort of like felt like pulling a plug at one point. There's a lot behind it. Uh, but I think that's a useful process, and what we are now getting down to are the protocol procedure pieces, and it is my absolute conviction that we will have far more harmony uh, between parent community and school when we have good process and procedure. It's been spelled out that we do all understand that we all have some kind of input in. Uh, the process is, is uh, doing that is kind of long and cumbersome, but I hope effective. Okay. <clears throat> This might be nice once it's passed to disseminate this out to the, to the uh, parent student community so that they are aware of what changes are. And there are some changes. Rosemary. Mr. Chairman, that was my comment. Uh, is this going to be distributed in the course guide for school? I would think so. I would think that, that, that it is in our best interest as well as everybody's best interest uh, to make sure that this really gets out there. We have, in answer to your general question about policy dissemination, the administrators and I in our summer meetings have begun the process of reviewing specifically policies that have been adopted um, that we need to understand and disseminate. Uh, we do put some policies in the uh, new hire packets that we now prepare for people coming into the system. Some of those policies are those that are federally mandated to be distributed to all employees every year, such as the sexual harassment policy. But uh, we continually look at how do we get that information out there. Uh, I think this one is so central to the way in which schools operate that we have had a lot of discussion about it and I uh, would be comfortable that all the administrators will be through the team leadership or in the high school committee on instruction and various other ways we have not only of giving a piece of paper to people but be sh to, you know to discuss what the what the issues are behind this and why it's important to grasp the spirit as well as the letter of the policy yeah, I, th I think that's very important because I think that the policy is only as good as it's consistently applied, and I think that's been one of our problems with policies in general. And I think we have a real opportunity here to to move ahead and and apply it consistently. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. Any further discussion? We will now move on to new business. The first is a consideration of the superintendent's nominations for continuing contract teachers. And you have in your packet uh, a list of those teachers at Panco. I'll simply read them. Wilma Miramontes uh, from Panco, uh, Spanish, it's fourth grade. Uh, I also does some teaching in the middle school. Uh, Georgiana Zimprich, kindergarten. Uh, Susan Dana, Spanish. Shirley Willis, Special Education, um, High School, William Brewington, Biology, Kurt McCandless, Math, and Susan Richmond, Biology. Uh, any comments, any questions from anyone? Seeing none, I entertain a motion. Rosemary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the superintendent's recommendations for teachers going on continuing contract as read for the 1993-94 school year. Do I hear a second? Uh, Loretta, any discussion or comment? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We now move on to consideration of the superintendent's nominations for second year probationary teachers. And again, the list uh, is Pond Cove, Deborah Casey, Speech Therapist, Marilyn Dale, Special Education, Lynn Meter, Special Education, 
Jill Strauss, gifted and talented, who basically is uh, attached to the middle school, although she has done some work at Pond Cove this year. Um, at the middle school, Bev Bisbee, seventh grade, Ellen Brady, special education, Joanne Dowd, eighth grade, Donna Durham, special education, Nancy Entwistle, speech therapist, Rachel Garrett, seventh grade, Eugenie Moore, special education. At the high school, Tracy Brennan, English, Katie Lisa, social worker, Nina Miller, school nurse, and Scott Shea, physical education. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I entertain a motion. I uh, move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for second year probationary teachers as read. Do I hear a second? Uh, Jan, any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. We now move on to nominations for coaching positions for the 92 93 school year. And we have <coughs> JV Baseball, Scott Shea, 7th grade baseball, Jerry Jackson, 8th grade baseball, Dave Allen, 7th and 8th grade tennis, Rachel Garrett, girls JV tennis, Susan Ray, and 8th grade track, Scott Hendry. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I entertain a motion. Mark. I move we accept the superintendent's nomination for additional athletic positions for the 92-93 school year as written. A second. <laughs> Loretta, any comment? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Okay. Uh, the next item is really two-pronged. Um, and I will comment in the second part of that packet, uh, I would like to comment on under next year's JV Girls Soccer. That is that should be a TBA to be announced. Other than that, the list is as it stands. Uh, the first part of that memorandum is uh, the this year's recommendations from meetings from the co-curricular meeting and I'll just go down through them rather quickly and then answer any questions the purpose of these uh, co-curricular meetings as spelled out in the contract is to review both the rates uh, of the stipends that is to review the number of hours or various um, uh, activities change from time to time and people come in and say well I'm working twice as hard as I was last year I have three times the people etc or in fact the activity may have shrunk and we have to adjust the hours accordingly. We didn't have any uh, requests this year to review those stipends. We had already reviewed a lot of them last year so those basically stay the same except for the following changes which are primarily for uh, what we are regarding as district-wide appointments. The first two are really, in fact, the first three that are on this list are really issues that uh, are federally mandated um, and that we find that we need somebody specifically involved with them to run them and uh, we've tried different ways of doing it and uh, right now we're satisfied that we have a handle on it, but these are our recommendations. The ADA coordinator, we talked a lot about ADA and the budget process. Um, and it has turned out to be much more of a, of a job, frankly, than we originally thought it might. It's a combination of, of organizing uh, meetings, which are right now uh, targeted at um, a series of sifting through priorities for uh, our proposed um, um, plan, particularly targeted at the high school, but with some implications for modifications that have to be made at the middle school. In addition, there are some sort of day-to-day -day kinds of things that come up, and it, it's been extremely handy to have um, Shirley Willis filling that position this year who has um, contact with the students as well as their parents. So we are uh, recommending that we not only continue the position, but it was started uh, up, frankly, with my recommendation to the uh, Finance Subcommittee, I think sometime in probably in November, and we just guessed at a rate uh, based on uh, hours at 1500 but after reviewing it, we are recommending that it go to 2000 for the upcoming year. Uh, in addition, we have uh, a great deal of um, paperwork that comes through something known as chemical safety. 
Matt Monterio, our chemistry teacher at the high school, has been doing that on an hourly basis and reviewing the hours and frankly what uh, basically it costs us now, we thought it was better to turn that into a, a stipend and we're also recommending the $2,000 stipend for that. Um, the third recommendation is the, uh, a modest stipend of $250 for an affirmative action officer. I think I was the first affirmative action officer in this district 20 years ago when it first became federally mandated and I was getting my master's in administration and the then superintendent Bruce Thurlow wanted somebody to read the regulations and sift through them and I think our current affirmative action plan has some of the original language in it. We have updated it somewhat but it's probably time to update it again. Can I tell a story at this point? I heard sure. from a I heard from a board chairman of many, many years ago that when you had that position, they started calling you Connie Gold person. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten that. That probably is true. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a it was a lot of stuff to wade through, but anyway. Um, in the meantime, uh, Mary Bruns has worn this hat for many years uh, and has always been gracious and not asked for a stipend. Now that she is um, insisting that she will not do it anymore, uh, she has asked and suggested that a small stipend be attached and we, we recommend that we follow her suggestion and we will go out into the district and try to find somebody who is interested. If not, I'm afraid I, the superintendent is the person who becomes the affirmative action officer in default. So I hope we have somebody interested out there. I don't have a name to suggest at the moment. Um, and the last item on this was the discussion we got into this year, actually once school started. Uh, uh, you remember that in our teacher evaluation instrument, we included a small stipend uh, for, uh, that is, a $500 piece per grade level for something that we called <laughs> curriculum work and it was un we were unclear exactly how to shape that knowing that people would come forward and ask for it and we, we thought we could probably um, deal with that on a 500 per grade basis that gave us a budget. That what happened this year is that we had projects at the Pond Cove particularly the math project and we made good use of it there uh, but I'm not sure how how much uh, the two other buildings uh, were aware that it was there and we decided that we needed to give it more um, more prominence to write up a process. I think what I will do if you buy this idea here or you approve this idea, I will do a, a memo and send it out to all staff so that they will know that this is an opportunity for many grants within the system because this is essentially what we're suggesting to you. The budget level is, is uh, $2,500 at each building level. And we are suggesting that the um, uh, building administration, team leadership, uh, an individual teacher uh, drop a proposal uh, either for all of that money or part of that money and submit it to the uh, building leadership to see how that, uh, if there's only one proposal, that's may in fact be what happens. If there are multiple proposals, we're suggesting that we have a system-wide group that meets from time to time, the team leaders uh, throughout the um, system, and they and I can sit down and review them. We're also suggesting that these mini projects be tied to board level goals for the year. That is, we would like to support a, um, a structure here that will look at the goals as set by the district and inc invite teachers to write proposals for them. Um, there are many, many worthy projects that could come through, but we would like to particularly emphasize with this structure what uh, would be tied to system-wide goals. Now, I hope that, I, I don't know how clear <coughs> this is. <laughs> so I'm explaining it. It sounds a little fuzzy, but what's written down there is fairly Nancy Bolton. Mark, that sounds vaguely familiar, and it sounds like something I would strongly uh, encourage. Yes, I think you. I do believe there was a yeah. proposal. Yeah. I think so too. <laughs> came out of Mark's. Uh, any other comments, Ian? I, I think that's just a, a tremendous idea, and I think um, it's it's really a way um, that teachers can put some of their ideas together and. 
or the you know grade levels or the administrators whoever and and uh, bring them forward and try things on a pilot basis and uh, you know really get creative with it so I, I think it's excellent um, about the other three things I just have a cry of anguish over the uh, federally mandated <laughs> things that we have to do I I think it's uh, it's really too bad that we've got you know teachers um, who you know are, are very talented and have lots of other uh, hands-on things they could be doing that we have to have doing this and my, my question is do all these things have to be done by an actual teacher um, in the system I'm, I'm just not sure it's their highest use well um Answering that question, I think, is somewhat difficult because this is the, I mean, basically, these are the people who are dealing with it now. They certainly, for next year, are the best qualified. We'd have to start all over again with some other process, and we would have to do it. Well, I just had to cry out on that one. I think I think it would be hard to bring someone in from the outside. To oh, that, to that's not what children. I. That, that's Maybe. actually not what I'm suggesting. I'm, you know, but I am wondering if, uh, if there isn't a parent in the community who could do the ADA or the maintenance director or somebody else to do the safety thing. If it's mostly a matter of um, paperwork issues, that, Some, that's all I'm asking. I'm not saying we should hire someone. Some of the Kim Safe is very much tied to expertise and knowledge, okay. um, and Pat has already really, frankly, right. devoted a lot of time okay. to that, and we would, I would strongly recommend that we, we stay with that. Uh, one of the things that does happen, and the affirmative action officer is certainly a good example of that, the, there's a period of time when these things are very time consuming and do require expertise, and frankly, I think it is helpful to have a, a person who's really familiar with the um, with staff and with some of the day-to-day -day issues, although that's not saying a parent couldn't, but I'm just saying it tends to be the teacher. Um, but then it kind of calms down. In other words, once we have the groundwork laid, some of these projects are approved, the priority list is approved, we have a budget, we are working, moving forward. Uh, some uh, of the emergency type adjustments we've been having to make in middle school on a year-to-year -year basis and so forth, uh, I suspect it will uh, fade into a protocol and procedure and will not require uh, this kind of attention. That's why this is on the co-curricular on a year-to-year -year appointment okay. basis. And also the remuneration is at a somewhat lower level per on an hourly basis for the stipendary work. Mm -hmm. That's correct, isn't it? It depends. I mean, it can vary. But it is for the, the one that is going from the hourly to the stipend, it's just about a wash. It's just about a wash. Well, the, the hours have stayed, the estimated hours have mm -hmm. stayed the same. Yes. But the hourly uh, remuneration is less than uh, the hourly rate uh, that a teacher earns teaching oh, yes, by yes, quite yes, a yes, substantial yes, yes, margin, I'm sorry, I believe. Yeah. I, I, so, I see your point. I, I'm not complaining about the money issue. I'm, I'm thinking of the time and the energy involved in that that could be, you know, more student. Well, and if, and, the, and if the teacher had other opportunities papers. to be with students, but to some extent it's akin to, to coaching, uh, of course that's with students. Right. Now, I know what you mean, but we have to do it. No, I, no, I, and, I, and I know we have to do it. I'm this is probably at the, the best, the most economical way to do it. Yes. Rosemary. Uh, as the uh, school board representative on the co-curricular committee and also as a finance chair, I can say that the values uh, attributable to the stipendent position is very fair and there was an extensive discussion um, over those and um, really the, the people that are taking those positions at least on this year basis are doing it because they really have a keen interest in it all except for of course the uh, from an action uh, officer who may be by default. Um, and also we reviewed in detail um, the hours for the co-curricular uh, positions and there was movement and additions and deletions to some of those uh, hours so I feel very confident to make uh, a motion at this time to accept uh, these positions including the additions to the board okay are you making are you going to put this into three you can <coughs> if you wish there I just call to your attention that there are the recommendations that have just gone through from the co-curricular then attached to that 
um, is a list of co-curricular and coaching appointments for the 93-94 school year. I, I should note that I, we think this is awkward. There is language in the teacher contract that requires us to bring to the board to notify teachers by April 15th of appointments for next year. So I want to point out that this, these are um, next year's appointments. In some cases, our experience is that we make appointments and then people, by the time the next school year starts up, there may in fact be change in staff, there may, people's private lives may have changed, so they're not available to do these things. And uh, we're only doing it, frankly, because there is a contract obligation. It would be my recommendation to the school board and to the teachers association that they ought to change that date. It doesn't really match, and if you'll notice on the uh, next, on the sports uh, list, which is on the next page, all of next year's spring sports are TBA which I think is quite appropriate because we haven't even gotten into this year's spring sports. And in some cases, we may have a first time coach and we certainly would like to know how they work out before we make a second year appointment. Uh, and this is the way in which we're trying to handle that. Mm -hmm. uh, refresh my memory on the contract. Uh, we we uh, can fill a position if we want to. That's one step. We don't have to fill any of these uh, coaching or other positions. That's the first step, and that's right. that's spelled out in the contract. Right. The second step is the date of appointment. Right. And in that, in all cases, it says specifically April 15th? Yes, I've read that mm. yes, a does. dozen times because I couldn't believe my eyes, but every time I come back to it, I... Give I, us something to talk about, Charlie. I just reviewed it in looking at the contract for the next negotiation session, session and it is in there. Yeah. Well, that's a tough one to get around uh, well, as a I, I'm not sure. function. Uh, I suppose it's in there because of people's interest in knowing before the end of the year, but it, I think we can find some way of modifying that so we're not into this situation. Some of these things are fine. They would be what? Yeah. Right, but uh, I think that some of the, um, some of this is, is sort of fluid. Okay, I see the first page, the um, ADA coordinator, chemical safety coordinator, affirmative action officer, and the way we are going to divvy out the de staff development curriculum teacher stipends as changes or additions, and I think we should act on those first. I don't see the ADA coordinator, the chemical safety coordinator, or the affirmative action officer coming forth with any recommendations at this point of who they will be. Or do you have we only have one chemical safety uh, candidate, and that's Pat Monteri. I would, and I also would, would uh, I think it was our intention, and I, I realized as I was going through this, I hadn't put it down. Shirley Willis has been doing the ADA coordinator this year, and that is our my recommendation, my okay. nomination. I don't have anybody for affirmative action. Okay. So would someone like to entertain a motion to, to uh, recommend um, the establishment of an ADA coordinator, chemical safety coordinator, affirmative action officer, and a procedure of how we will uh, disperse staff development curriculum teacher stipends? The affirmative action officer is already a position. It's just not a stipended position. That's correct. So okay. we just refer to it as a newly created stipended That's position. Okay. Rosemary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we accept the superintendent's recommendations for Shirley Willis as the ADA coordinator system wide, uh, Pat uh, Patricia Monterio as a chemical safety coordinator uh, system wide, the stipended position of affirmative action officer, TBA, and the uh, newly formed staff development curriculum teacher stipended position uh, to be determined uh, throughout the year and brought back to the board for review. Do I hear a second? Jan? Any discussion, comments? All those in favor? 7 0. And now we move on to co curricular appointments for the next year. 
Um, do we want to read those for public? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Loretta? I'd like to move that we accept the co-curricular and coaching appointments for the 1993-94 school year as written. Do I hear a second? Rosemary? Any comments? Is that what the correction that the superintendent referred to? Yes. The, the only one on the coaching assignments is the JB girls soccer to be announced. Any further discussion? Questions? All those? Well, yes. Could, could I just ask that I know we've seen it in various forms before, but some sometime have a breakdown of all these co-curricular co positions and the number of students they're serving. Mm, we have that. We've I, I've seen yeah. never in one place though. I don't think we've seen all of them for both schools. Usually the I believe the um, athletic director in his yearly report usually gives us a breakdown the number of kids the costs. Um, Trans it breaks down the actual right. cost, but, but I, I, I understand the curric the co curriculum yeah. has never. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay. We now move on to discussion of the proposed 1993-94 school calendar. I defer to the superintendent. And, and you also have um, an amended uh, calendar in front of you. There were some, I think it was just basically a, a numerical error in counting at the bottom of the page. And uh, you have a green calendar and then you have a white calendar that makes those corrections. I did a fairly long memo, which I think is probably too long to, to read. Uh, to try to summarize, once again, we tried to use a process here uh, in putting together a representative group to discuss the calendar. Our process in the past has been to have the administrative group uh, meet and discuss um, a variety of issues of calendar. Within the framework, of course, the state mandates 180 days, 175 teacher-pupil days, and five teacher-only workshop days. Um, a major issue for us this year um, uh, discussion of the current calendar had been whether to start before Labor Day or not because you may recall that that was an early Labor Day. We chose not to because of the construction that we were going uh, through as far as the uh, kindergarten wing was concerned and uh, frankly it wasn't ready uh, had we started before Labor Day so that worked out. But of course I realized that with a bad winter and so on uh, we didn't have any hesitation making the recommendation that we start before Labor Day this year. So this calendar starts before Labor Day with teachers coming back on the 1st of September, which is a Wednesday, and students coming in on the 2nd and 3rd, and then the Labor Day weekend. Um, a, however, I think the major issue for discussion in this calendar uh, uh, process was the uh, situation with the so-called teacher workshop days or the released afternoons. This is a practice that the state has allowed for, I forget exactly how many years, uh, in an effort to allow staff some time for staff development and of course for elementary in particular, elementary and middle school, parent conference time and, and uh, it, but it's been a, a pretty mixed blessing. Uh, staff likes having that time, on the other hand, everybody realizes that there's something happens to a student's mindset about the day of school and uh, we've seen less and less uh, enthusiasm for the practice. Uh, in fact, this year at the elementary level, uh, we made a real effort to schedule our specials, so-called specials allied arts classes during the day in such a way that um, elementary teachers also had planning time. This has worked well, uh, been some glitches, but basically it's working well enough, so we're certainly going to continue the practice uh, so that we now have some planning time available to all of our staffs. This has led us to believe that we can responsibly recommend that the released afternoons be drastically reduced. Um, in fact, this calendar doesn't have any. 
time for that. Uh, we do have had a concern raised, uh, the, particularly elementary teachers who are have been scheduling conferences on two of the five teacher workshop days and have used the released afternoon preceding that as an opportunity to schedule them and they have raised that issue. Uh, nevertheless, I think the wave of the future is going to be um, a full day for students. That does, in fact, add instructional time to the calendar. We take uh, either eliminate or reduce the re released afternoons. Uh, we also, uh, in that calendar committee, are recommending that the association, the school board, and the teachers association the negotiated process at least examine the possibility of buying another teacher staff day to help, again, a critical need that uh, teachers have to plan together. Um, I think those are the major issues. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what kind of winter we're going to have next year. This calendar does include five snow days. We have managed to limp along. We're almost to April vacation. And I can't remember a year when we've ever had to call off school after April vacation. So I certainly hope this isn't going to be um, some kind of record-breaking year. Um, that reminds me, the last day of school this year, I've had several calls on this, is Thursday the 25th. It is both a staff and a student day. Excuse me? 24th. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I knew I should have written that down. Thursday the 24th. But it is a Thursday. That I'm clear about. Um, okay, that's a rundown of the major issues for next year's calendar. Any comments from the board? Any suggestions? Um, there was a recommendation to put back in um, two of the half-day workshops um, preceding con the full-day conference days, both in November and April. Um, any board comment on that? Is this only at Pond Cove? It would be Pond Cove at Middle School. Ann? I, I'd like to propose that, uh, that we compromise on that issue and put back the half-day in November. Uh, which my understanding um, of, of Pond Cove situation is the time that they really need that half day the most. And that, that would give them uh, basically a full year to uh, revamp their conferencing procedures between now and then, you know, presuming we vote on it tonight or shortly um, to, to sort out those conferencing issues. And it does still give them uh, you know, the two full days in November and April to use for conferences, and I think that, I think that's appropriate, but that's what, it, what I would like to see happen. Any other comments from the board? Uh, would the admin, uh, Mark? I, I think that's a reasonable compromise. The, the concept of half days counting as whole days for student instruction um, has con continued to be a large concern of parents and board members. And I think for appropriate reasons. If the concern is that we need more teacher in-service days for whatever reasons, that should be negotiated as a separate concept and that we should not, in an effort to accommodate those needs, take it out of instruction time for children. Anyone else? Uh, the, the, any of the administrators or anyone for the public like to comment on that proposal? I just would like to respond uh, on behalf of, of Pond Cove, and I think I'll let Nancy Hutton speak to the middle school. Um, we would be very appreciative of having that half day in November, certainly. Uh, and what we would like to do is to look to other ways to accomplish that need uh, to have the conferences in the, in the springtime, of course, but maybe look at a different way of doing that uh, during our uh, time that we spent looking at, at uh, ways of of revisiting uh, these issues of, of calendar and looking at ways in which we could um, conference in different in a in different manner. Um, Nancy Hutton had suggested some ways we might be able to to use um, time more creatively and I hope that we could aim to do that <coughs> in April. Um, but I think that we do need time. We need to get some feedback from parents. I think that that's very critical. 
Um, one of the issues that we clearly have to look at is, is there a difference between the fall conference time and the spring conference time? In other words, the needs at those particular times. And I think getting feedback both from teachers and from parents will be helpful in, in accomplishing that. Rosemary. Well, I, I have a comment and then, and then a question, Beth. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, if we go with the student placement policy and the stream, uh, um, very specific, administrative procedure, I think that the conferences will be streamlined because my personal experience and then my hearing of what goes on in the April conferences mm -hmm. is really a request for placement for the next year. That certainly is So it, yes. I think that that's one aspect. The other I was concerned about, when in November would that half day be? Would it be the half day before the holiday, then a holiday, and then a no school day? It would be the 11th, I believe. The 11th is oh, a holiday. The 10th. The 10th. The 10th, okay. The 11th is Veterans Day. Oh, okay. So, but it would be continuous no school as opposed to mm. a follow over to the next week, right? right? I would certainly prefer that just in the interest of what we've tried to do, and that is make concentrated periods of time with no interruptions. And November still doesn't look too pretty, but it's November. Another aspect of this that, that we talked about at the, at the calendar uh, committee meetings was to uh, the need to ask of parents to be, to be certain that they can be available for those conferences and we were assured by at least a couple of board members that, that, would, uh, that they would make that known to, to the community. I, I hear you and now I remember I said I would make that little speech in that you know we have placed a lot of uh, workshop days around uh, long weekends or near holidays to and in knowing that that would be you know nice and convenient for families however you know we do have a situation here with a with a conference day for uh, pond cove falling right after a holiday and of course parents are going to leap at the opportunity to take a four-day weekend and i would just uh, stress to parents that you know they have a responsibility also to make um, in the school calendar work um, and and the conferences are important and you know long weekends aren't everything and that's uh, that school is their kids primary job and I hope as many parents as possible will um, make themselves available for conferences in that time um, at, because we've made a real uh, a real effort to uh, concentrate uh, the school days and make them real full days and in return I hope parents will keep up their part of the bargain and show up for conferences when conferences are scheduled. Loretta? Using that philosophy, why did you choose April the 8th to be a teacher workshop day instead of April the 15th? That was, wasn't that a, um, a progress report issue at the, uh, at the middle school? What's the issue? Some, some of these things are, seem to be somewhat beyond our control. <laughs> Rosemary? Uh, could I hear what the issue is? About the eighth verse, the verse what what is the progress well, why, report? If we're trying to connect yeah. holidays with teacher workshop days. It seemed as though if they had made April fifteenth, that would since everybody catches a plane on Thursday night, it would leave Friday as as a non school day rather than the eighth. Nancy, that, those were um, some direct requests from the middle school to hook the conference times or potential conference times up at the time that we were delivering report cards. And that's why the 8th mm -hmm. seemed preferable to us. Also, just historically, the day before April vacation is not a high attendance day for us um, because many families mm. get travel plans that include that. And I'm afraid if we put that as a conference day, we'd really put a lot of stress on that situation. Keep them but after <laughs> Ann's little speech. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't very effective. <laughs> I'd just like to say, just to continue Beth's comments that, you know, ditto seems to be sufficient, that um, the no in November would be the time when the half day would be very helpful. In April, those conferences will be different for us at the middle school. I think your comments, Rosemary, about the placement policy are appropriate. That's what most of the conversation is about. Um, April 8th conferences, Probably for our eighth graders, for instance, those should occur earlier anyway, which we will do with some creative planning um, in the middle school because the time when 
eighth grade parents seem to need to have conferences is when students are signing up for high school courses, which takes place usually the first part of March. So um, we look forward to the challenge of trying to figure out how to do conferences in a different kind of way with allowing teachers to have some school time, but also allowing students to be involved in some worthwhile school activity as well during the same time. Jan? I think it's important to note, too, that, that from the perspective of, of Ann and I on the committee, that um, putting back, that, that the compromise basically was that the teachers use the full days as conference days and find another way to do the other conferences as a move in the direction of eventually doing all of the conferences in a different way than we are now. And that the year after this, if, if this calendar works, that I, I would expect to see the half day in November once again removed. And that we will be looking at a new way of, of doing conferences. I, I think that's a good point because the reality is obviously that we're dealing with a finite amount of money and we do have five days in here for staff development and I would like to see that time actually used for staff development um, and right now we have two days that are that are taken up with conferences which are very important but I think with uh, you know concerted work on the part of uh, many of us um, we can probably find some some very satisfactory ways to deliver conferences and then those days could truly be used for for teacher development Rosemary it, well I wasn't asked to make the speech but I will make a comment uh, about the uh, fact that a conference day is being scheduled after a holiday and as a parent who uh, has been known to take her children out of school as a vacation day on a half day before a vacation, I, I think it's important that the community know that if, or understand, or maybe I'm going uh, too hard on this, but I don't think it's the responsibility if I choose not to attend a conference day on a dedicated time frame that that I should expect that six members of the eighth grade team, for example, uh, should be able to, um, you know, adjust their schedule, which has many other tasks, at another time to accommodate my choice not to participate in the program as uh, stated. And I, I really would like to see that communicated. If this is a K-8, uh, you know, decision and the high school's out of it, that I think all K-8 parents should understand. We said that very clearly yeah. at the committee meeting that if teachers are willing to make these adjustments, then certainly the parent community has to be willing to make the adjustments as well. I, I agree. I think that's very important. Well, not, not only that, though. Um, I think we have to go one step farther and, and say, you know, there, there were some comments in the committee, well, parents haven't been going, you know, in and complaining about conferences, but this has become something that people just feel is expected of them and maybe not every parent really needs to have that conference a parent who's in the classroom every week may not need to meet in the same in the same formal manner that other parents do so you know i think i think we just need to have open communication on this and i think we have a parent that would like to make a comment if you could come to the podium and identify yourself please <coughs> My name, my name is Vince Koshinsky. I have a sixth grader and a fourth grader. Parent-teacher conferences are important for me, and I would hope for the rest of the parents, to get an idea of what actually is happening with all the implications, all the things that you're implementing here tonight and in your other previous meetings. Also, the reality of coming at a specific time is difficult not only for schedules for the, for the teachers, which I know are important, but the parents. More and more parents are becoming two-income families. And in my case, coming at a specific time that the teacher recommends is kind of difficult. And in both my children's cases, I've had to reschedule at an earlier time or at another time what the conference is because because of time frames either to work or, to, or whatever. But to, to make sure that the conferences do happen is critical. The one thing that I have always believed that a school board and the teachers and the administrators 
should do is keep the parents informed. There are times when I think that the administrators and the school board don't really listen to the parents, and it's not coming back. It seems like that there is an awful lot of procedures coming out, and the parents are just brought along with it. At least that's the feeling I get. And I just hope that in your deliberations between yourselves and the teachers, that conferences continue at a regular pace and give us the full opportunity to see all the things that you're implementing that are helping our children. And that's all I'd like to say. Any comment? Well, I'd, I'd just like to make a comment. The, the intention is certainly not to uh, provide fewer opportunities for um, discussions between parents and teachers, not by, not by a long shot. And when you say that uh, it, it seems like we're not really listening to the community, but it, this came up because of many, many comments to many of us um, over the course of a long time. Um, that things weren't working all that well. And what, what we're basically attempting to do is break, break down this monolithic approach to, you know, shuffling parents in at 20-minute intervals over a course of a day and a half, which doesn't seem very constructive to teachers when you, when you talk to many of them privately and, or, or to many parents. So we're just trying to find a better way, but it's certainly critical that every parent has the opportunity to sit down. If I had, if I had an opinion about it, your first conference, this April conference that we just had, in both cases, I didn't feel anything more came out of it. In, in, in the first conference, that's where things are set, and this is the direction that your child is going to go to. This last conference, other than, as what has been discussed tonight, is placement. And that was, out of 20 minutes, at least 18 of them. We didn't get into how is he doing or how she's doing. It was just placing but that first conference experience. <coughs> I, I could echo Mr. Krasinski's concern as a parent because that's the, the same impression I got from my April, my April 7th graders conference. Um, I gained nothing from it. My child had been doing well all year and I felt it was a total waste of, of both the teacher's time and my time to be there. And I, I gained more out of that November conference. I think when a teacher sees, you know, uh, over a period of a day and a half, sees uh, anywhere from 20 to 25 sets of parents, I think the, the parents get shortchanged, especially those parents at the end of a conference day, and, and I think the teacher's tired also. So I think it's a very ineffective use of that time, and, and I think we have to find a better say, system. As a, as, a, as a middle school parent, what has helped me dramatically is the progress reports. The, whoever implemented that, to me, has been a godsend because there I can identify whatever problems that are occurring, and I as a parent, in my end of the deal, can try to direct my student, or direct my son in this case, to try to improve. The progress reports are excellent. One, I don't know if it can be more than once, or if you decide that that's, that's the way it is, but the parents' progress reports are far better than that set of problems. And that could be something we could implement on a quarterly basis as another four times a year. I, I also think there was a change in the middle school's uh, structure in how parents contact with their children's te team of teachers, and that's using the advisor advisee. I felt that to be a very effective way of, of contacting and maintaining communication with teachers. Um, it meant a teacher only had to deal with 15 students, and I think that was very effective. So I have to compliment the middle school on that change. Mark. Uh, as we're looking to creative ways at approaching conferencing next year, I would like to just echo um, what Vince had mentioned about especially families that have, uh, that are two income families. And I think all, almost all service industries, perhaps with the exception of banking, have realized that it is simply impossible for some people to access their services during the 8 to 4 schedule. 
and to keep perhaps we could keep that in mind hopefully it'll be a small number of parents but that perhaps some evening time slots need to be available to those parents also okay, in uh, defense of banking uh, there's <laughs> certain <laughs> <laughs> There are certain parts of banks that function 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, and uh, right around the globe. Now, there are other parts that don't. Uh, Not the public access. But, but I think... Well, we have ATMs now. That's true. I, I think the evening, uh, uh, the idea of uh, reallocating or buying some teacher time to the evenings has a lot of merit. And uh, you, you probably, did you discuss this in this, uh, in this committee? So you know, I figured you probably would have. We did. One, one of the things that came up was that, you know, there has to be reciprocal time then for the teachers um, if they are going to spend an evening. And what's happened in the past is that perhaps they've been there until 9 o'clock at night. And so Friday at noon, they leave to, to make up for that time. And a parent sees them downtown shopping and says, you know, what is that teacher doing out of the school? And so I think that that's where communication plays an important part, that we have to let people know and understand that it's not a teacher playing hooky, it's a teacher who has earned the time to be doing this. And, and that's one of the creative ways that we need to, to, to look at this. Can I say Damn. one more thing just about the possibility of the sixth uh, teacher day and that is um, I, I certainly hope that won't be the last thing we look at because ultimately I hope we're going to be looking at extending the student year as well so I'm hoping that discussion is just the first step because I, I got a call from a parent today wondering are, are we talking about that or is that a dead issue and I said no I, I hope it's an ongoing discussion we have a lot of obstacles but I hope we'll keep discussing it I also had a parent today ask me that same Did question. You? It's on Beth. <coughs> Our Ponco newsletter is going to be going out very shortly. It's all been run off and it just has to be assembled. And I just would like to urge um, folks who might be listening to return the last page. It's a survey, a very short uh, survey with some questions in regard to conferences and some of the things that we've talked about. Uh, and this will provide us, I think, with some good concrete feedback uh, and dealing with some of these specific issues. So if parents would return those to, uh, to school, we can put some of that information together. Thank you. Any further comments? Um, this is an item which we have to act on by our May meeting if the board wills th that we don't need any further input or further discussion, it's something that we can act on at this meeting, whatever the will of the board. Would you like to make a proposal? Yes, I move that we accept draft number two of school calendar 1993-94 with the correction of a half day on November the 10th. Do I hear a second? Second. Mark, raise his hand. I'll give him the credit. <laughs> I'll give him the credit. Two points. Uh, any further discussion? I would like to make one comment. Two years ago, we had 10 half days, student teacher half days. And if we have got to the point of eliminating all but one half day, I think we've made significant progress. I felt those half days to be of little value to my children as a parent. And I feel that we, through a cooperative effort of the board, the staff, and the community, and a process that we are looking at a way of better delivering our children's education. And, and I'm, I'm very pleased at how this committee came to these results. Loretta. And two years ago, the elementary school had no common planning time in grade levels, and now they do. And so it's been a nice trade-off that they have their time for planning, which they needed those half days for. And now we don't have the half days, but they still have the common planning time. So again, system-wide, looking at what's the best way to deliver what we are here to do. And I think that's a very positive step, and I hope it's going to continue. And know it will continue. Any other comments? I'd, I I'd just like to I'm say. I'm waiting for any further comments. <laughs> 
and it just gives me great pleasure to be able to vote in favor of this calendar this year. <laughs> <laughs> and it pleases all of us. <laughs> Would you like to make the motion? No, 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 no. I, I thank my fellow board members, I thank the superintendent, I thank the staff, the administrators for their efforts in coming to some resolution on this. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, the next two items gives me great satisfaction to see finally the last two contracts come to resolution for the 92-93 school year. The first one is ratification of the Secretary Aid's contract for the 1992-93 school year. And in your packet you have a uh, clean copy of the proposed uh, contract. Um, any discussion? Questions? Seeing none, I entertain a motion. And I will ask our one of our negotiators from that particular bargaining situation to propose that. I move that we accept the collective bargaining agreement between the Cape Elizabeth Education Association and the Secretary's Education Tech Ones, AIDS, and Pond Cove Administrative Assistant Bargaining Unit for July 1st, 1992 to June 30th, 1993. Do I hear a second? Second. Either. Any discussion? Comment? All those in favor? 7-0. The next contract is for the collective bargaining agreement between the Cape Elizabeth Education Association <coughs> and the bargaining unit, the bus driver's custodians. And I'm going to defer to Rosemary Reed, who was one of the negotiators for the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the collective bargaining agreement between the Cape Elizabeth Education Association bargaining unit of bus drivers and custodians for uh, year July 1st, 1992, ending June 30th, 1993. And as the other bargainer, I am going to second that. <laughs> <laughs> Highly irregular. <laughs> Highly irregular, but at the discretion of the board oh, chair. Anyway. <laughs> having, having negotiated this particular contract two years in a row, um, I have to give great credit to the uh, superintendent for leading us through this negotiation, which is an effective uh, negotiator. Um, any comments? So, all those in favor? 7-0. Now we are free to start on the 93-94 <laughs> negotiations for all five units and I have received 120 day notices from all of them. Yep. Uh, the last item is a approval of the SERP Superintendent's nominations to administrator recertification governing board. This is a, an area board made up of volunteers, uh, administrators in the area, uh, and uh, the, our nominations where Nancy Hutton will be our representative with the alternate Nancy St. John. Any questions, discussion? Uh, entertain a motion have to vote on Yeah, we do have to vote, don't we? Yeah. Okay. I entertain a motion. Okay, I move we uh, accept the superintendent's uh, nominations of Nancy Hutton, Nancy St. John as uh, deputy. Uh, alternate. Alternate uh, to the administrator recertification governing board. Do I hear a second? Second. Um, Jan, any questions? Comments? All those in favor? 7-0. Um, dates to remember, uh, a public hearing and budget adoption on Monday, May 10th, 1993 at 7.30 p.m. in the council chambers. Um, Monday, May 31st, 1993, town charter requires budget adoption by this date. So there's a workshop for budget adoption on the 10th and the town charter requires that we have it adopted by May 31st. Uh, again, the Joint School Board Building Committee Workshop on Thursday, May 6th at 7 o'clock in the Council Chambers. Um, the, next school board, the next school board meeting for May 
1993 policy subcommittee meeting will meet Wednesday, May 5th, at 19, uh, 1993 at 9.30 a.m. in the superintendent's office. The finance subcommittee meeting uh, at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, May 11th, 1993 at the superintendent's conference room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, May 11th, 1993 in the council chambers. And I would remind everybody um, that um, election, uh, municipal elections will take place on May 4th, on May 4th, 1993 at the high school. And I believe, I'm not quite sure, but I think candidates night is the 29th of, of April. We think so. We think so. For sure. Okay, I entertain a motion for consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for the purposes of negotiations and a personnel matter. I move we enter uh, executive session for the purposes of discussing a personnel matter and negotiations. Do I hear a second? Rosemary. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0.